Hello there, everyone. Today, for initial checkout, we have this. This is a tuner. It's an old tuner made by Seiko. And the model is ST1000. It was made in Japan. And my grandmother actually found this in her storage room and gave this to me some time ago. So this should be pretty interesting. Let's take a look at this. Alright, interesting. Oh, okay. So there is a Lika cell in here which has now expired. It expired a few months ago. Yet, miraculously, it has not leaked. Let's get that out of here. Whoops. <laughs> it may have been starting to leak. But it appears that the tuner is intact. So that's really good. We grab another 9 volt battery. This one is the Energizer, which I've had better luck with, although not perfect luck with. Here's a look at the sticker inside here. Come on, focus. Okay. It says, please push this reset switch after the battery was replaced. So I would assume the reset switch is right there. All right, so that's kind of odd, but okay. Let's see if I can get this cover back on. Oh, whoops, it was still zoomed in. Sorry about that. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So we have off, tune, and sound for this switch here. It also takes a 9 volt center negative adapter. And there is a manual in here. Alright, so here is the manual. Unfortunately, it's one of those annoying folding ones. But I'll see if I can show you the English section on here. You can pause to read each part. The English section is just on the right side here. Let's take a look at these specifications. So the displays are, I guess, a VU meter. And a tuning guide, which is two LEDs. So here's the meter. And then each of these, flat and sharp, has a little LED. You might be able to see it with the glare on there. But there's a little LED underneath each one. And then there are the node and pitch indicators and the octave indicators. So these have the note names. 
and there's a light at each one, along with a, a sharp indicator, and then here are the octave indicator lights. And the measuring range is C1, which is all the way down at 32.7 hertz, to B7, which is almost 4,000 hertz. The accuracy is plus or minus one cent. So that's pretty good. The range of the reference note is C2 to B6. And the calibration has eight different uh, versions, ranging from 438 to 445. So that's not too big of a range, unfortunately. And the terminals include an input jack, an output jack, both of which are for audio, and a DC 9 volt jack. Although it does not want to say, even in the power supply section, it doesn't want to say how much power, how much current the DC 9 volt supply needs to supply. And there are the dimensions, along with 195 grams with battery, so I guess all batteries must weigh exactly the same. And the accessory is one battery. All right, so after reading the manual, it's a bit easier to understand everything about this unit. Here's the battery low battery indicator, I guess. This here, this is the level that you want the meter to jump to during the couple of seconds of initialization and battery check. If you turn it on, it does this. So as you can see, the battery is good. And then we've got the input jack for tuning electronic instruments or plugging in a line directly to tune. And the output jack is basically the same thing it says whatever note you're tuning is also output through the output jack. And then there's the 9 volt jack. And back here is the speaker. I've also got some rubber pads on here and a single screw. And here's the calibration selection button. You can choose which of the levels you want, which of the uh, standard A's you want. And the note and octave selectors for the reference sound. And then there's the microphone. <clears throat> so, first let's test out the uh, tuner. So, first I'm going to try and sing or hum an A. Mm -hmm. Alright, looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jeez, my computer is making a bunch of noise. And all right, I'll do a a G next. Let me see what the calibration is at actually. Okay, looks good. All right, well, I think it works. I think the tutor part works. So now let's try the reference sound. That's actually kind of loud. Interesting. Oops, I just turned it all the way off. So let's go through different notes and different octaves now. Wow. It almost has some distortion. It's like lower frequency harmonics in there. 
All right, so this thing seems to work pretty well. Also, the manual, interestingly enough, said under absolutely no circumstances should you use solvents like thinners or alcohol to clean this. But there you go. I'm actually not really sure how old this thing is. Couldn't find any indication of a date code. There's 24. I don't know what that means. The box... The box itself is definitely reminiscent of the 70s or 80s. And I would, I would say the same thing about the manual, which again has no date code indication that I can find. But I think this would be from probably the early to mid 80s. And in case it was kind of hard to tell in the video, the box is a nice rich purple color. There we go. I've adjusted the focus or the exposure now. So you can see, it's a very nice purple color. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm glad it works. And this is definitely a neat tuner. So that is the Seiko Chromatic Auto, Chromatic Auto Tuner Model ST1000.